When I was a little kid, I had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. All I knew was that I loved to travel. And as far back as I could remember, everything I loved revolved around travel. I would collect all of the encyclopedias at the grocery store. I would climb trees and pretend that they were foreign countries. I even had the world map memorized in 10th grade. And this was all well and good until I grew up and had to be part of the real world. And it started with going to college and having to choose a major and choose a future career. This completely stressed me out. And I can remember sitting in the dark, dingy office of my guidance counselor, and he was asking me how I envisioned myself working in the future. We did this visualization exercise, and I literally saw myself sitting at a cafe in Italy working from my laptop. And granted, at this time, I didn't even own a laptop. This was the year 2000. Somehow I saw myself being a digital nomad, even though I didn't even know what that was yet, hadn't been invented yet. And he said, that's not a job. That sounds like you're on vacation in Italy. And I was like, well, yeah, you're right. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I'm making money, but somehow I'm able to sit here and work in this cafe on my laptop. So fast forward a couple of years, I had the opportunity to study abroad and I really never looked back. I spent a semester in Costa Rica and a semester in Australia. And once I realized you can travel to other countries by yourself, you can live in other countries, I was like, this is what I want to do. This is me. And so for the next 15 or so years from the ages of 22 to 38, I basically traveled the world nonstop. I went to something like 50 countries. I would spend anywhere from a day or a week or a month. And in some cases, I would keep returning to places year after year. And I had really the most incredible life. I had amazing experiences. I'd be riding four-wheelers through the jungles of Costa Rica or surfing the Bukit Peninsula in Bali or sailing the coast of Croatia. I could just meet my friends in Paris or Norway or Thailand or wherever it was on any given day, any given weekend. And I would be constantly like pinching myself at how great my life was. I could be hiking a fjord on a Tuesday morning or having drinks with friends on the Sun River in the afternoon. So I thought that I would live like this forever. I couldn't think that there would be any kind of better lifestyle. But of course, all of that came to a halt in 2020 with the lockdowns of the coronavirus pandemic. And like you, I, I'm sure we all had to slow down during that time. And, and that's when I happened to land in Miami and I stayed here for the next couple of years, but then got that like itch to travel again. And so at the end of 2021, I went back to Europe for like a year and a half and traveled the world. I went to the UK, Portugal, Spain, the Netherlands, Brazil, Mexico, and started traveling again as a nomad ever since. But this year, things have changed, and I have now been in Miami again for about four or five months, and I think I'm going to be in the U.S. at least through the end of the year, and I really have no idea what's going to happen next year. If I'm going to be a digital nomad again, I don't know. That's why I'm making this video. But what has been so scary about this time after being nomadic for nomads for so many years is that I feel like my identity is so intertwined with being a digital nomad. I have this YouTube channel talking about it. I wrote a book about it, Digital Nomads for Dummies. I write about it. I speak about it. And the great thing about being a traveler is that you can be whoever you want without the influence of your own society on you. But when you travel forever indefinitely, it is possible to kind of lose your sense of self when you actually have no roots at all. So I've been thinking really about slowing down and, and maybe permanently stopping the digital nomad lifestyle in the future. I really don't know. I do know that I don't want to do what I did before, which was you know change locations every day or every week. So I wanted to make this video to just share with you like kind of what I'm thinking and why I'm leaving this lifestyle for the time being, because a lot of you have commented like, where are you? You know, why aren't you traveling? So these are the reasons in no particular order why I've decided to stop being a digital nomad right now. The first one is slow travel. Slow travel can mean anything to you. 
Slow can mean one week, one month, one year. But I think for me, it now means staying in one place for years at a time or having like one or two, maybe even three home bases that I rotate between. And to do that, you really need to have residency in another country, ideally citizenship there. And because of my past of traveling so much, I never really needed residency because I never stayed anywhere long enough to to need it. And so I've been thinking a lot about which countries I would get residency in or, or citizenship, as I talked about in another video. It's a long story, but that would probably be in Europe. And I think balancing time between Europe and the U.S., is what would be ideal for me. I don't want to live here all of the time because frankly, I get bored, <laughs> but I also don't want to live abroad all the time because I'll miss my family, which I'll get to next. But another thing that's happened that's really surprised me about wanting to slow down is my job. So my job, my full-time job since 2011 has been as a relocation consultant, helping people move to different countries. And for many years, it made sense for me to be in those countries, understanding how it was to live there, how to open bank accounts, how to find good schools, what's up with the language, how do you find lawyers and accountants and any of the people that you would need to, to move to these places. And so I would go to Canada, I would go to Cyprus, I would go to Mexico. I was traveling the world researching to help people move to those countries and get residency, et cetera. But since starting my YouTube channel in 2018, my podcast in 2019, and now DJing in 2020, like the amount of gear that I travel with, it's, it's so much. And so for my career, not just what I need to do my career as far as the equipment, but also the amount of time that I want to dedicate to my career, that balance has changed. When I was younger, in my 20s, I really just wanted to travel and that I would just take a limited number of clients. But now I work with relocation clients in addition to publishing my podcasts and YouTube videos and working with sponsors and, and writing books and speaking engagements and all of these other things, plus the music. And so I find myself spending more time working, but because I like my job uh, versus like more time just having fun and traveling. And I do think you need to have fun and take time off as well. But I lived a life before where I was always really mixing work with lifestyle. And so it was kind of like 50-50 career and lifestyle. And now I'm more interested in focusing on my career and less interested in just like traveling for fun and leisure all the time or going somewhere just because I can. A huge reason for why I stopped being a digital nomad this year is my family. So I have come back and forth to the U.S. throughout my digital nomad journey to help my aging grandparents, to help my family with different things. And that's one of the things I love about the location independent lifestyle is that you can be there for special occasions, for the birth of a baby, for birthdays, like for, for whatever it is, you don't have to wait until holidays like Christmas or something, but you can spend as much quality time as you want with your family because you can work remotely, you can work from anywhere. So in some cases that might take you farther away from them, but in other cases that might bring you closer to them. And uh, for me, it did both. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think after graduating from high school and college, I just wanted to travel because I had spent my whole, you know, first 20 years of life living with my family. And so I wanted to explore the world. But after the next 20 years of exploring the world, I'm like, you know what? Uh, my family is pretty cool. I don't see them that often. Let me be closer to them so that I, I can see them more. I also, some like things have happened that were out of our control. Things that I like, I can't talk about in this video. I'm, I'm reminded of how short life is, and I've gotten so many phone calls when I was in different countries of, like, a relative passed away that I, like, don't want to be on the other side of the world if that happens. I should have done this one last. So that's been important to me to be um to be here for my sister who was having a baby and uh I don't know just being close to my niece and nephew 
some of my clients and Patreon patrons know a little bit more about what I'm talking about here, but I'm not going to put it in this video. Another big consideration for me has been finding a relationship. This is a tough one because I know a lot of digital nomads feel the same way. Like we love our lives so much that we don't want to compromise our lives to be in one place for a relationship. But this is a recurring issue for me. It's just a recurring challenge that comes up where I meet somebody, it's like the wrong timing or the wrong country or whatever it is. And so I don't know if I'm going to meet somebody compatible where I am right now. But I think, you know, after decades of traveling as fast as I have, I think it makes more sense to either stay in one place longer or move between a couple of places that I keep going back to to keep those relationships going. I'm sort of in a long distance relationship with someone in Europe and we don't know when we're going to see each other again. So just things like that are really hard. But it's not just romantic relationships. It's also friendships. During my peak nomad years, I really think that I lost touch with a lot of my friends from childhood, like from high school and college. And I have also made thousands of other friends during my travels. And I completely cherish them and I wouldn't have it any other way. But it just in general, it's hard to stay in touch with friends from from back home and then it's also hard to stay in touch with people that you meet on the road because you're going in different places and you know you're changing locations you're switching countries and so it's not so much that I need to make new friends here where I am or find new friends anywhere it's more about creating space when I'm not traveling on airplanes that I can like pick up the phone and call my friends rather than like being too busy to talk to them. Another thing that's really important to me is my health. And you can probably relate to this. It's very difficult to establish a routine as a digital nomad. And I have been pretty good about staying healthy while traveling full time. But recently I've just been getting so much joy out of like walking outside and going to the community yoga class here on the beautiful waterfront and going downstairs and going to my gym. And I travel with my workout gear. I travel with yoga mat. I travel with weights. <laughs> my luggage is very heavy. I don't know if I mentioned that. I'll link to the luggage I use <laughs> in the description below. But I sometimes don't want to carry my workout equipment around the world with me. Like I just want to have it in my apartment and be able to use it whenever I want. I don't want to be putting towels down in hotel rooms so that I can do my workout on top of the dirty hotel carpet. <laughs> like I just, I don't know. I just want to have better conditions for things like that. And then of course, cooking and like eating healthy at home compared to eating out. It's much easier to do when you're in one place. And it, it's definitely possible to do when you're traveling. It's possible to order healthy food in. But like little things like every time I change destinations, I restrict myself from buying things that I like, like my favorite kind of olive oil or specialty food products, because I calculate how many days I'll be there and if I'll be able to use that product before I leave. And that is a little bit crazy. I'm sure a lot of digital nomads can relate to this. Also not having like the right furniture and the comforts of home when you're living in Airbnbs, but also not being able to like buy the food you want because, you know, you might only be there for a week. So you're not going to use it. You'll have to leave it or throw it out and then buy it again in your next destination. I absolutely love being location independent and I wouldn't change that part of my lifestyle for anything. But I think just because you can travel wherever you want, whenever you want, doesn't mean that you should all the time forever. And so I am taking this time for myself to stay in one place, to not rush to the next destination, to reevaluate who I am, what I want out of life, what I want out of the next 10 years of my life and just really spend a lot of time thinking about that before I go and just book an Airbnb in another country tomorrow. I do want to point out that I have been a digital nomad for 20 years. And so if you're just starting out your journey, then you have so many years ahead of you to experience the amazing things about this lifestyle. But once you've been doing it for a while, I do think that 
this lifestyle comes to a natural, not conclusion, but a decision-making point as to how you want to spend the next phase of your life. Do you want to spend it as a nomad? Do you want to spend it as a settler? Do you want to create some mix of different options? And I also talk about this in my book that I'll link below as well, like different structures for your nomadic lifestyle. But you could be starting your nomadic lifestyle as a 20-year-old. You could be starting it as a 70-year-old. So regardless of what age you are, if you're just starting out your lifestyle living abroad or being location independent or being nomadic, then you should do this lifestyle on your terms and on your timeline. And I will continue to make videos here on my channel about it. I don't always have to be living that lifestyle to be able to talk about it. And I have a lifetime of experiences to be able to share with you in these videos, lessons, learnings, so that you can learn from my mistakes and from my experience. So thank you for taking the time to be with me today. I hope that some of the reasons that I gave you have really helped you with making decisions in your own life. Uh, feel free to subscribe if any of this resonated with you and you want to be here for the next part of my journey. And I'll also link to some of my favorite videos here for you to watch next. Thank you so much.